I'm not a tall man. I'm not the shortest man either. I used to be though. Growing up, I was the shortest kid in my class till like my junior year. In family photos, and they lined up all the kids according to height. Yeah, I was on the end until I outgrew my sister. That was a big moment for me. She didn't care for it much. But you know, growing up as a small kid, it, it sucked in a lot of ways, but it did help me in other ways. Like I wasn't gonna win any fights or anything, so my way of kind of surviving middle school was to just, you know, become a total weirdo. Because they can't fight you and laugh at you at the same time. So I became this spazzy, goofy, silly kid that was always just trying to do whatever it took to get people to laugh. And uh, you know, it, it wasn't a personality trait so much as a survival strategy. And I guess that worked. I mean, I'm still here. But you know, over time that raw, unfettered weirdness kind of honed itself into something resembling a sense of humor, and, and now I kind of make my living doing that, so yeah, it all worked out. But if I lived on the island of Flores around 20,000 years ago, I would have fit right in because there was an entire species of humans that were undersized like me, and I wouldn't have had to be funny. Or maybe they were the funniest humans of all time. In 1950, a Dutch archaeologist and missionary named Theodorus Verhoeven came to the island of Florence in Indonesia to spread the good word of the Lord, whether they wanted to hear it or not. Flores, by the way, uh, gorgeous. Theo was a man of the cloth, but he was also a part of the International Order of the Societas Verbi Divini, or SVD for short. Not to be confused with STD, that's, that's a different thing. People in the SVD were highly educated. Our man Theo, for example, had a PhD in archeology span from the University of Utrecht. So to him, the island wasn't just a great place to spread the word of the Lord, it was also a place of great biodiversity. And he also thought that he might be able to find some remains of Homo erectus, which came through that area around 1.5 million to 750,000 years ago. He got to work and he quickly started coming up with some discoveries, including a pygmy elephant species that he named Stegodon, <laughs> which is not a pygmy sounding name. That sounds like something that fought Godzilla. But he wasn't there looking for pygmy elephants, he was there looking for Homo erectus. And by the way, look, if you're gonna get through this video, you're gonna have to learn to just not giggle when I say Homo erectus. I know you're doing it. So in 1965, he was excavating a cool cave called Liang Bua, which translates to cool cave. <laughs> but that's not a joke. Caves being a good place to find Homo erectus bones and artifacts, there's a reason why they were called cavemen. And after digging about a meter down, which translates to about 2,000 years ago, he found some Homo erectus bones and artifacts, and this started a whole bunch of series of explorations and uh, archaeological digs into that cave. Digs that are still going on to this day, but in 2004, they found a skeleton that stood out, and it was called LB1. Because it was the size of a small child, but it was a fully grown adult. And there were some other things that were weird about it as well. Things like a misshapen head, giant feet, it was about 30 years old, a meter tall, only weighed 25 to 30 kilos, and it was only 18,000 years old, meaning she was alive when modern humans were around. This was the holy grail of weird, and they nicknamed her Paula. And shortly after that, they found 11 more skeletons just like Paula. So, 11 more holy grails. These were in poor shape, they weren't uh, as complete as the Paula skeleton was, but it was enough to show that this wasn't just one weird short person from a long time ago. This was a whole new species. Homo floriensis, it came to be known, or Flores man, and it sent shockwaves throughout the archaeological world, some people calling it the hobbit species. And it set off whole new waves of theories to explain how it got there. Now the difficult thing about Homo floriensis is that it actually shares some qualities with a couple of different species, one being Homo erectus, the other one being Australopithecus afarensis. And so you may be thinking, you know, so what, these two species got together and made the beast with two backs? What? No. That would be difficult because Australopithecus actually went extinct like a million years before Homo erectus came around. I mean, love crosses many boundaries, but a million years, unlikely. Another theory suggests that they were modern humans that were all sort of afflicted with a genetic disorder like Down syndrome or uh, microcephaly or Laron syndrome. But the likelihood of an entire species having the same genetic disorder is unlikely. Besides, there are other uh, tells of those conditions that don't show up in these skeletons. And really, science hasn't completely settled on this issue, but they do think they know how they got there. 
Like other hominid species, Flores man just kind of followed the food and the resources available to it. And around this time, Earth was slowly warming up from a previous ice age, so a lot of seawater was locked up in glaciers, which lowered the sea level. And this created some land bridges around the world, allowing humans to kind of walk freely. So these guys were able to just kind of walk to the island of Flores because it wasn't an island at the time. And then when the water came back up again, they got trapped there. And then, separated from the rest of the world, they evolved separately. And that means they started shrinking. Very slowly, generation by generation. But as my first girlfriend once asked, why the shrinkage? This is known as Foster's Rule, which explains a couple of different types of evolutionary morphology, one called insular dwarfism, the other called insular gigantism. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Insular dwarfism is when a species gets smaller over time, insular gigantism when it gets bigger. But why would some species get smaller and other species get bigger? Well, according to Foster's Rule, large mammals tend to get smaller when they're on a smaller landmass with limited resources. Smaller people can get by on fewer resources, so they survive longer, reproduce more, and so the whole species shrinks over time. This is why Flores was also the home to adorable, tiny pygmy elephants. Adorable pygmy elephants called Stegodon! Insular gigantism occurs in smaller mammals that grow larger because there's fewer predators, and Flores had examples of this as well. Like giant 16-inch rats with 27-inch tails, 5-foot-tall storks, and 300-pound Komodo dragons. Now, Foster's Law actually applies especially well to lizards because they're cold-blooded and they can control their metabolism so they can go longer between meals. Plus, as the rats got bigger, those were the meals of the Komodo dragon, so the Komodo dragons got bigger. But if you are a large mammal with a big, hungry brain and you're trapped on an island with fewer resources, your best survival strategy is to get smaller. Much smaller. Now, some scientists have theorized that even though Homo floresiensis had a smaller brain than ours, that they may have been a more efficient brain, maybe even more efficient than our own. It's not the size of your axons, it's how you use them. The idea of small people forming advanced cultures is not that hard to imagine. There are actually pygmies all over the world today, and they have some commonalities that they share in terms of how they got that way. Environmental pressures, much like Homo floresiensis, uh, but not quite to that extreme. Pygmy cultures usually arrive out of places where they don't have the caloric intake that the rest of the world does. And the second is just natural selection. If you're, you know, living in a really thick rainforest of South America or in Africa and, and you're trying to chase down prey, you know, running through that being six foot four inches tall is not an advantage. And it doesn't exactly help you to sneak up on prey either. So naturally, smaller individuals are going to be more favored through time so that they can more easily get around in the jungle. And there are a lot of pygmy cultures around today. The Negrito people in Austronesia, the Tyrone people in the foothills of Myanmar, the Andamanese from the Andaman Islands in India, and there are many different tribes of pygmies in the Congo. Many of these cultures are actually the oldest people that have been around in that particular part of the world, which makes sense because the longer you've been there, the more chance there is for the environment to shape your morphology. And humans, hominid species throughout time have always been shaped by the environment. I mean, they, they had to be or we would have died out. Take Paranthropus robustus, for example. Paranthropus robustus, or PR for short, lived around 2 to 1.2 million years ago in Africa. And it was a large ape-like hominid with massive jaws. And it had a massive sagittal crest for those jaws to attach to, and massive cheekbones to let the jaw muscles go under. It was a very head-dominant hominid with really strong jaws, so they thought that maybe they used these jaws to crush nuts until lasers got involved. They did a laser cutoff of a sample of a PR's tooth to try to determine what kind of carbon it contained so that they could determine what kind of food it ate. And it turned out this massive ape was actually more like a massive cow. It ate grass, and a lot of it. You know, it, it found success in this niche. Its digestive tract evolved to process grass, and it continued to eat grass. And it ate grass. Unfortunately, when PR was around, the climate wasn't exactly stable. So there was a massive cooling event that killed off all of the grass in the area and its habitat. And uh, without a food source, PR kind of went away. And much like PR, Homo floresiensis is also extinct. Or is it? I kind of hate that Vsauce owns that move. But no, there is a possibility, a very slight possibility, that uh, the Hobbit people, floresiensis, is, are still kind of around. Possibly. Maybe. Back in the 1700s, when the Portuguese discovered the island of Flores, the natives told them stories about little human-like creatures. They called them the Ibu Gogo, and they described them as these little impish-like creatures that would steal food and children. They had a whole mythology around it, and apparently back in the day, way back when, 
they uh, they kind of lived together like the the Ibu Gogo lived in the caves and the people lived in their villages and stuff and they had an uneasy truce going on but they maintained it and then at one point the Ibu Gogo got a little bit too greedy and stole too many <laughs> children I guess and the people went to the caves and they burned the caves to destroy the Ibu Gogo but the rumor has it the legend has it that some of them survived and to this day they're out there lurking in the woods watching for bad little boys and girls to steal and take back to their caves i mean as fairy tales go it's not bad but the fact that they have this legend on an island where tiny people did used to live a long time ago alongside modern humans i mean it's pretty interesting so yeah some people think that homo floriensis might still be around running around in the jungles of the island of flores and just like Bigfoot, you know, news stories come out from time to time, but there hasn't been any hard evidence yet. So what do you think? You think the Hobbit people are still out there roaming around in jungles? Do you believe in Bigfoot? Are you into cryptozoology? Interesting at all? Talk about it down below. And this is, of course, just one of countless evolutionary examples of ways that our species has transformed and evolved according to the environments that they lived in. If you have one that you think is super interesting, talk about that one too. So all right, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, um, maybe think about giving it a thumbs up for a like and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and maybe check out this video. Google thinks you'll like that one as well or any of the others down the side. And if you like them, I invite you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday and every Thursday. As always, t-shirts available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash store. This one is, I don't know where Australopithecus or Floriensis would fit on here, but this would be Iron Manesis. <laughs> all right, I can always go with it. All right, thanks again for watching. You guys go out now, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you on Monday. Love you guys. Take care.